Thomas here with Much Props, gonna give you another how-to video. Today is an epic day. Not only is it a build day, obviously, but I hit 40,000 subscribers this week on YouTube. That is 4.1 million views over 370 something videos, 220,000 hours of view time, and I, I wanna celebrate that. I know it's not a big milestone in terms of YouTube, but in terms of small town teacher who does this as a hobby, yeah, we're gonna celebrate. So I was thinking of ideas and obviously 40K, Warhammer 40K, you see the progression there. I posted on my social media a few weeks ago asking what Warhammer 40K helmet would you like to see me build? And then of those people who responded to it, I picked four of the helmets that I, I liked and then others kind of responded to and then asked the question again, which of these would you like to see me build? And about 60% of the people voted for helmet number one. Not to say that I won't build the other ones, but this was the one that was obviously the top choice. So that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to build that Warhammer 40k helmet out of foam and, I mean, like lenses and lights and stuff, uh, and give it away. Let's get to building. The free template for this build is down in the description below. Click on the link, print it out, cut out the outside of the black line, and then trace onto your materials. I mostly use 6mm EVA for this build. Each part has the size of the foam I used on it. Dash lines with numbers followed by letters means that the part was too big to fit on copy paper. Tape it together before you trace it. I applied contact cement to all edges, let it sit for a few minutes, then begin tacking stuff together. The registration marks will help you with alignment. I also have the parts laid out by orientation here on the screen on the right. Try to keep things flush on the outside, though it doesn't really matter because I'm going to cover the surface with EVA clay here in a minute anyways. I like to glue up half at a time so that parts don't sit for too long and I don't feel rushed when assembling. Markings on my template are explained on the cover page that comes with the plans. Now time to join the halves. I started by adding the nose in the middle, then tack the top and the bottom together, slowly working towards the middle. It's not necessary to do it this way, but for me, it helps to keep the ends I am not working on relatively stationary. If you need to, you can lightly come back with a heat gun later and form the forehead and nose area if you need to. I made the skull template go up further than it needed to so that it could be used for another build. The helmet will will connect right above the eyes so it's not necessary to have that big a forehead.
to make the helmet portion curve a little better and lower the amount of pull on the seam lines, I heat up the foam and push it onto a round object. Mine is a glass dome for a porch light. If you get the shape heated wrong, you can always go back after attaching everything together and make some corrections by lightly heating areas away from the seam lines. I try to keep the caps as simple as I can, so basically you're doing the same assembly stuff as we did with the skull just now. Contact them at the edges, wait a few minutes, then start tacking it all together. I like to close up the darts first. Those are the large V cuts in the foam. Then I use registration marks to join the halves together. Remember I said the forehead was big and that I didn't need it. In order for it to follow the curves of the inside of the helmet, I cut some darts back into it. Then I glue it on the inside of the helmet base, working from the middle out to keep the spacing even. Any areas that you can't tack down fully, you can hit them with a little bit of super glue to finish the job. This extra screen is me adding a piece to correct the shape of the helmet so that it goes down over the skull. Now that the base is done, I can start adding on my detail layers. I trace on the base where these parts will lay to help me align them and limit the amount of contact cement I put in areas I don't need it. I stack up the layers for the forehead crossed and plop it onto the helmet. Then I add the little mohawk strip pieces together and tack it to the base. The back end is flush with the back edge and the front ends towards the top of the helmet. I add a couple of little dividers in the vent layer later to match my reference images, just a couple of little strips of some 6mm EVA. The ear pieces stack up pretty simple. I cut one inch wide strips to go along the sides. They could be a little bit narrower to make ear pieces stick out less. Once the ear is assembled, mark it out on the helmet base about a quarter of an inch off the side and the bottom edges. The ear hood goes over the top of this assembly and needs enough space to glue flush on the front edge.
the ear hose connection is just a stack of three layers of foam glued to the front of the ear assembly. There should be a gap between it and the skull jaw. The mouth hose will slide behind it. You could attach it first, but I had to figure out the template parts as I went, and this order made it easier for me to figure out the sizes. I decided to keep everything on the build foam for the most part, with the exception of the light and the eyes and the little skull on the cross. So I cut out and drew this weird two strips of kernel corn looking thing to make the teeth. I put a stone bit on my rotary tool and started carving out the shape. The top teeth stick out a little bit further than the bottom, so I sanded underneath them. Then I went down each line to separate the teeth individually. I did this in two passes going on opposite directions to round off each side. To make the hose, I took a 25 millimeter EVA dowel and split a five millimeter EVA dowel down the middle to spiral it around it. I used the groove in the cause tools channel rail to hold the dowel steady while I cut it. Then I drilled out the holes in the ear and the mouthpieces to super glue the fake hose into place. To smooth out areas of the skull, fill gaps, and add structures to the cheeks and mouth area, I added some EVA clay foam. I used FOMO for my friend Cosplay Apprentice. To make it more pliable, just to add some water to the foam and knead it in. I wet down the surface of the skull also so that the foam will stick to the clay foam. And it's pretty much just smushing stuff into place and then smoothing it over with your wet finger like you would clay. After about 24 hours, I came back and sanded and carved it a little bit to refine the shape even more. I tried casting the FOMO into one of Evil Ted's skull cause molds, but I had a texture issue. I left it out on my back porch to dry out, and it was about 97 degrees and a little humid, so the foam sweat, which left this porous surface. To keep it flexible on this piece, I just filled the cause mold with hot glue, then hot glued the skull to the cross and filled in the gaps with more hot glue.
battle damage and detailing time. I added a little foam clay and circles in certain areas to make bullet indentations. Using various bits on my rotary tool, I began gouging out parts of the foam. I did match a few spots with my reference images, but for the most part I just randomly laid down marks. To make the sutures in the skull and deep damage on the rest of the helmet, I switched over to a wood burner and a flat edge on it to burn in finer details. Make sure to wear a respirator and work in a well ventilated area while sanding and burning foam. You don't want to breathe that stuff in. I put down three layers of Plasti Dip to make sure I had full coverage since it will be acting as the base color too. I couldn't tell for sure from the image I had if the skull was gold or just a regular skull color with a glossy surface, so I went with gold. I dry brushed on some gold rub and buff, then hit the edges with a lighter gold metallic paint pen. It's a little subtle, but I think it works pretty good. I blended it a little bit with my finger while it was still wet. I dirtied up the black surface with some brown and black Platifex acrylic paint just to kind of give it a little bit of subtle variations and make it look a little grimy. Then to highlight my battle damage and make it look like chipped painted metal, I sporadically hit edges with silver rub and buff. It doesn't take much to get this effect so use a light hand on the silver. It's kind of hard to see what I'm exactly doing here, but basically I found some tinted safety glasses that fit the inside curves of my eyes. I buy these in bulk at Harbor Freight and they're super cheap. I split the glasses in half, sand over sharp edges, and hot glue it on the inside of the helmet. I use this black hot glue to fill in the gaps between the lenses and the foam. I did wire up some LEDs to battery packs, but I'm not an expert with electronics, so I didn't want to show you the wrong things, but I'll tell you what's basically being used. I wired four LEDs to some wire and then used these little auto soldering clippy things that I got online. Two of these will be diffused by packaging foam for the eyes and the other two will be glued in a slit on the top of the helmet so that the vent glows with a red light. I cut a hole in the ear to tuck the battery back away. Kami Cosplay has great books on wiring electronics that you could check out. Thank you. 
and we are finished. Here is the end result. Overall, I think it turned out pretty good. There are obviously some things that I could work on as a maker, and these are reasons why I point these out at the end of the video, because I know that I could always be better. Um, so that's why I point these things out and critique the work that I've just done. Seam lines, some of them are a bit sloppy. I figured I could cover most of it up with battle damage, but there are a couple of areas where it needs to be smoothed out just a little. Me being more patient and taking that time to finish it off instead of wanting to jump immediately into paint. Uh, I need to pump the brakes on that. Um, I build these things to fit my ginormous head and things like noses on my builds are usually a little bit bigger because I've got a fairly large nose. Um, so these are things that I can, I can fix just a little bit, but in reality, they're not big critiques for the most part. I didn't have an image for the backside, so I just kind of made it up as I went. Um, the helmet could be wider, these could be narrower. I could nitpick this to death, but overall I think this is a pretty awesome helmet, and if you would like to win this helmet, go to the very end of the video or just let it play through instead of skipping what I'm about to say. Um, it, it'll be in the, in the end as far as roles and things for the contest, for the giveaway, because YouTube and, you know, laws. Uh, so check that out. If it's after two weeks from this video being posted, just disregard that. I don't know what I was talking about. Uh, I want to take a second to kind of thank you all. So here's me being cheesy and sentimental. <clears throat> Here we go. <laughs> this year sucked for a lot of reasons, uh, the pandemic being one of the main ones. As a teacher going back to school after a pandemic, it was the most stressful year as an educator I've ever had. Uh, and this outlet that I have here on YouTube to showcase stuff that I've made, DIY stuff, how to, is giving me an outlet for my frustration and stress. And I could come home and just block out all those things that are going on at school, all the new regulations that I had to go through and, and just be creative. Um, and that really did help me to manage my stress and manage just everything that was going on. And I know that that was something that some of you felt also because you reached out to me and told me those things. So please, I encourage you definitely to do that. So thank you to every single person who subscribed, liked, shared, gave me some positive feedback or negative feedback. If you dislike the video, it's still engagement. Um, thank you. It really does, from the bottom of my heart, motivate me as a maker to continue doing what I do. Because you guys have been so amazing this year, I had some opportunities that I probably wouldn't have ever got otherwise. I'm a, I'm a teacher in a small town in East Texas that literally does this just for fun. Uh, and I, I had some companies reach out to me this year. I had some opportunities that that I still can't stop smiling about. Um, so here's here's specific thank yous to those people. Thank you to Cause Tools for sponsoring some of my videos. That financial support has literally helped me upgrade some things that otherwise I could not have done. Uh, they make some awesome EVA cutting tools, and I, I got a box of three of their new tools that I'll probably be showcasing here pretty soon. Thank you. Uh, also, in that same train of thought, thank you to Ben Edie and Stephanie Chan for reaching out to me and letting me be part of their Kickstarter for their EVA scale mail and showcasing their chain mail. Um, it's it's mind-blowing to me that, that a comic book designer colorist. Stephanie wears so many hats. She's awesome. And Ben, who's a engineer and prop designer for movies, uh, reached out to me and asked me if I could make some stuff with it and showcase it and help their Kickstarter. Uh, thank you. Because of them, I got connections with other people that I probably never would have been able to get feedback from. Um, a helmet that I built was showcased on Tested. Adam Savage has one of the helmets I built in his man cave. I can't, I can't not smile every time I say it. It's insane. Um, Bill Duran commented on that post, and Evil Ted and 
Odin makes and SKS props and Cosplay Apprentice giving me positive feedback here and there on videos and reaching out to me on, on social media and messages and stuff. Just for me to be even mentioned in the same sentence as those guys and, and, and women is, is humbling. I don't know that I'm there personally at that point, but I, they're legends. <laughs> I told you I was going to get cheesy. Um, thank you to my family, my mom, my brothers, my wife for supporting me. Uh, thank you to my coworkers who watch this and my students who watch this and everybody. Uh, I am truly humbled to be a part of your weekly routine and thanks. Uh, from the bottom of my heart, thanks. All right, that's, that's enough gushy stuff. Uh, maybe you'll try and make one of these yourselves and impress your friends with your ability to make stuff from Warhammer 40k, even though you know nothing about it and it still turned out kind of cool. Oddly. Maybe you'll get some. Yay! And inevitably, they're going to ask you, how'd you make that? You can give them one of these. Tell them. Much props. Um. Thanks again to all my awesome Patreon members who help support my channel on a monthly basis. If you want to join these awesome people, click the link down in the description below to help us grow a bigger, better, more creative community. Alright, now that I've stopped rambling on, let's talk about how you can win this helmet. There are some rules that I have to kind of apply to because I don't know every country's stipulations for giveaway prizes. So if this doesn't include you, I apologize. You must be at least 18 or older to win this helmet. You must be a U.S. resident to win this helmet. Sorry, I know. Um, you must... <laughs> You must understand that YouTube has no affiliation with this, nor does Warhammer 40k. This is a prop that I have made myself from my bare hands and just want to give away as a thanks to my subscribers for the support and reaching 40k as a milestone. So all that being said, there are no costs to enter. This is free to enter, free to win. I will pay for shipping to whoever it goes to. If you violate any of those rights or the YouTube terms and guidelines for contests, uh, you will be disqualified and I'll move on to another person. Uh, but here is what I need you to do to enter. I would like for you to leave a comment down below in the video. If you would like to win this item, I need you to hashtag at the very end of your comment Hashtag much props 40k. That tells me that you're interested in owning this, and then I can weed out those who didn't want it but just wanted to comment regardless. Um, I'll put a full list of all the detailed instructions, but that's the basic idea here. Just giving you an opportunity to have something that I've made as an appreciation for helping me reach this milestone. Thanks.